Good morning. How's sitting her friend's dog? Oh, let's get focus. Better. I really need to shut that light down behind me too. Anyways, we have our friend's dog, so I uh, had to go take it for a walk this morning first. Which just took longer. There we go. Now I should do better with my focus. So we got a few people here already. I still need to setting up my stream deck too. Uh, morning, Storm Breeze. And Sato. Good morning. Well, morning for me. Whatever time it is for you. Evening, Sato, it says. Uh, change the default for my stream deck so that I'm on my streaming profile. on my streaming profile. Get my iPad set up better for this. So what are we gonna do today? Today, we're going to, it's got today, there you go. You see about some stuff with iPadOS 15 after I've recorded my video. Specifically, can I program a globe key into my Anpro 2 or am I stuck with software and what can I do in my Moonlander? Show some of my few focus modes. Uh, and I'm gonna, or I found out from Rosemary Orchard in a different channel last night, how to uh, set up automations. Um, so that I can have my iPad set up to a task manager and my daily note when I come in. But before that, we need to record, oh, that's not what I want. We need to record uh, these. All right, I'm gonna record that. Migrating and questions connectors ask. Yeah, that gets me 16. That should get me all filled up. Yeah, and I need to, that will go in there. Mr. Espresso, hello. I switched to Craft in the first place because the iPad app for Obsidian was terrible. I do most of my reading and research on my iPad. There were there was non-existent, and they were only ever going to build a like viewer app. That's why I changed. There's no other reason, really. Craft is good, but I still like it. Like I don't dislike it, but yeah. Yeah, so the public beta just came out Storm Breeze uh, yesterday. That's why I'm on it. So you should be able to get it if that's what you're waiting for a public beta. It is out. It came out yesterday. Um, it came out yesterday, I think. So a couple days ago, anyways. I was using it all yesterday. Uh, it came out Wednesday. Yesterday was off for Canada Day. Today I'm off because I'll go camping next week anyway, so I might as well just take Friday off too and have like a week and a half off almost. Okay, so let's open this up. Or, you know, it's probably actually better to open it up on my iPad. Oh, my keyboard's off. On. The beta is reasonably stable. I'm having some crashes sometimes when I'm in split screen, but there we go. Turned off all my stuff. Yeah, I used one writer on my iPad too, uh, Mr. Espresso. But honestly, it just wasn't as nice as having Craft. That's it. Just wasn't as nice. Craft is far superior to one writer. No questions asked. And if you like design, then by all means, like 
That's why you should have it. So, anyways, that's what I'm going to talk about now. Anyways, I've got to make sure I prep myself for it so that I know what I'm talking about. And one writer still works, but the uh, the Obsidian iPad app is far superior. There's not even a question about which one you should be using if you um, have the option. Reviewing my notes. Usually we do this before I record, but like I said, I got a friend's dog, so we were I had to walk the dog first. I even got up like an extra like 35 minutes earlier and was not quite enough time. You gotta go to the Apple website, you have to go like search it's like beta.apple.com or something, but just search Apple iPad OS public beta. You have to install a profile. Uh, and then restart your phone. And it took a long time for my iPad, my 2018 iPad Pro to update. Um, my iPhone was actually faster, it's an SE2. So, yeah, just do that. Quite stable. Uh, split, Obsidian and YouTube in a split seems to crash. Um, not all the time, but like it'll crash and I gotta come back up and like start it up again, then it's fine. Probably actually want craft open now. There we go. I'm gonna probably want that open now, anyways, because I'm gonna show it off. You're welcome, Storm Breeze. Yeah, I'm gonna show that off. I'm not gonna show off agenda because, all right, well, let's get going already. Let's get going already so I can get this done. Move on to the next recording. Oh. I remember what alias is in here. To write that after just off the cuff it now, which is fine with me. Okay, as usual, I'm gonna give it a couple seconds silence, then I'm gonna start recording um, for the video, which will come out in a few weeks about why I uh, moved back to Obsidian. Welcome. Today we're gonna talk about why I moved back to Obsidian. Uh, lots of people asked why I left, and the shortest version is that it mobile app was terrible and was not going to be what I needed as a iPad preferred person. No longer iPad first because of work, but iPad preferred person. Before we dive into all the rest of this though, a few ways you can support the channel. Number one is to become a patron, patreon.com slash Curtis McHale. Number two is to take one of my courses. If you're watching this, you're probably most interested in my um, Zettelkasten course. There's a link to that in the notes below. Uh, or you can go to Skillshare and via curtismichael.ca slash Skillshare where I just get some money for you getting an account and then go find my courses. Um, other ways to support the channel, we stream. For the summers, it'll be 6 a.m. Pacific um, Fridays. And you can join me there. You can ask questions about what kind of whatever. I'll talk about bikes if you really want, but productivity, research, stuff like that. Uh, that's it. Let's buckle up and talk about why I moved back to Obsidian. So why did I move back? So the first thing to talk about is why I left probably. Um, and I never would have left if the iPad uh, OS, the iOS version of um, Obsidian was what we have now. 
The truth is it just wasn't. It was going to be a viewer app. It was going to be one where you could just look at your documents, not one that you could do full like research, full editing, full work on. Um, I do most of my writing and research on my iPad. Um, that's my preferred computing platform. My M1 MacBook Air literally almost never leaves my desk. The only reason I got a MacBook Air is because I am planning to buy whatever the next one is to, in short succession, graduate this Air down to my wife. And um, yeah, because I got kids that are going to need homework computers. So then they'll get her, my, her older, older Air. Um, and then they have some two computers to do for homework, a laptop and a desktop. Um, which should be fine for many years. That's the reason I got the laptop, but it almost never leaves my desk. Almost never, because it just doesn't need to. Um, so now on Obsidian iPad OS, iOS, you have a full-fledged mobile application. That really works. Almost every plugin works. It just works. So I love it. That is my preferred computing platform is my iPad. As soon as they released the mobile application that was going to be what we have today, that's going to be amazing, I started to wonder, uh, at least wonder, if I should be moving back to Obsidian. Now, I always believe that there has to be a strong benefit for it, and there was no strong benefit. Like, oh, this will be so, so much better if I move to Obsidian. At least at that point. So I didn't. I stayed with Craft. So what are the strong benefits? That's the next question. What are the strong benefits? So back in February, my job changed. I now run a web development team for a company called Markentum. And we, I just don't have to do task management for clients anymore. So I didn't need a robust task manager, which means I dropped it. Um, that's always really a good time to really look at your systems too, when you have a big life change like that, right? So if changing jobs, changing location, something like that, that's a good time. Getting kids, you know, kids moving out, good time to change your task management systems, any of your systems and evaluate them because your life has changed, your needs have changed. So with this life change, things three just didn't fit anymore was okay to manage my content. I mean, I even had a few shortcuts for it. Let me see if I can show you. Uh, I had a few shortcuts for it, right? So if I go to shortcuts and I show things three, I had a bunch of shortcuts for it. I had end the day and things, a new task, a pack project, because I'm with the parent council, um, show tags, GoDaddy, right? If I was going to do a GoDaddy writing project, um, I don't see my go content calendar. So this one actually like looked at what was in drafts most recently edited, put it in a calendar based on whether it was a Monday or a Friday. So like I had a bunch invested in that, but it just wasn't what I needed anymore. Um, it just really wasn't. It was too heavy for it. What I really wanted was a Kanban board. Um, and that's what I have now in Obsidian, right? So this is one of the things that I really needed in Obsidian. I have my Kanban board for my content when I really started looking back and doing my Kanban board in my content here, like we see in Obsidian, what I found is I really wanted to be linking to other notes um, that were in craft at the time. And I just couldn't because they were in a different application. So once I came down to that decision, I knew that really that was it. I had put the Kanban board in there and said, this is good. I tried out daily notes and I didn't really use daily notes before now, although I, I do now, I hadn't really used them before, but once I really started using daily notes and once I started writing for sure, writing for sure, I said, Ugh, I, I just need all my notes in there. That was it. That was the thing that did it. And then starting to look at the other applications, uh, the other plugins, checklists, you know, those are just benefits on top um, of what I had in craft, but it was really just needing to write and need to link my notes to other things. So, Writing and linking, that's it. Um, the other big thing I have loved now that I'm back in here is aliases. Let's actually show you my, well, it's iPad. Let's actually show you my screen share. So we go to community, it's a research dashboard. This is an alias, community building is in here. So I can also link to community building. Let's just cut that and do it this way instead so that I'm uniform. I've done a video on aliases. I will link to that. Uh, in the show notes. So being able to do aliases was a big thing that was awesome for me. I love that I can do aliases. I love that I can do right even smoking as one and uh, cigarettes, cigarette and tobacco all go in there. So if I'm gonna link to any of those, that's great. If I looked at my craft database, you can even see, right? I have some disabled seizure epilepsy, like those are probably two, seizure and epilepsy are two things that can go together. Um, and there's lots of things in here that I found that I really wanted them to go together, even though they couldn't, even though they just couldn't, um, because there's no aliases in here, which is unfortunate. Um, 
Yeah, which is just unfortunate. And I really wish that there was. Uh, now what do I miss in craft? Um, craft is a far more visual application, right? If we head back to craft, we can see uh, even my all documents. I did a couple weeks ago, I did like a, hey, maybe you can use craft for a Kanban board and you can drag things back and forth and have a Kanban system. That's good, right? We can even come in here, we can edit my card. I can say, actually, I want large cards, really large cards and apply. Now I have a large card. It's a lot more visual. Dragging in images, all these other things are a lot more visual and just, if you're that way of thinking, if that way of thinking really um, goes with what you want, then by all means. Conversely, we have, you know, just raw markdown. If I open up the data detective review, it's a three view, which I'll be coming up with. Like this is a lot more code heavy for people that look at code. This can make more sense for sure. Um, this can definitely make more sense. Now, the other thing I also left was agenda. Um, I've been using Agenda for um, just daily notes in meetings, really, in my meeting notes. And so what I do now instead, I don't have a meeting today while well, I have a stream. I counted that as a meeting. It'll just go to the day out of calendar. And so so I know, I'm not going to show you this because it'll be a work note. On the 12th, I have meetings at work. And I have notes already there for the 12th that I need to talk about in specific meetings. I just put give them their time, and then I go through my meeting. I'd use that in agenda. Now, Craft actually does that really well as well. If I go to my new daily notes, and let's say, uh, well, today I already have, uh, today? Yeah, I do have a daily note for this. Why doesn't it show me daily note? There you go, Craft daily note drag it out and I can take a note literally on my daughter's swimming. It'd be easy to do and it gives you the page, right? So this doesn't actually show up in my whole database um, at all. So this I could still link to it if I really wanted to, but it doesn't show up as like um, as a single file in a view like my inbox or anything. I'll have to edit the sneeze out anyways. So that's really nice when you do that, right? You can see what is my web accessibility. This is a course I'm taking from LinkedIn Learning. Um, and you can see like I can have this file, the first course, my notes on it, and then my summary is separate. So I can really go through and like summarize. And if I really wanna go back later, uh, I can dig into this note to find my exact notes. That is a really nice thing about Craft, that it actually does that for you. So the big question is, should you move to? And I'm gonna say no, probably not. Um, unless you have a solid reasoning that one tool is better over the other, that it's just absolutely by far the better option. There is no question that you need to have that. So when I looked at my content calendar and started writing and said, oh, I just wanna link notes. I have more ideas that I don't link. And I had to switch back and forth between the applications to really make those links. Once I got to that point, I said, I can't. Like this is, this is just too much work. And this is limiting what I can do with my writing. And I had tried building some Kanban boards in Craft and it just was not working the same way. So. Well, that is it. Craft is better if you're visually oriented. Uh, I love to write Markdown. I read and write code all day. So Obsidian doesn't feel like a hurdle in that respect at all. Um, that's really it. That's why I moved back to Obsidian from Craft. The Obsidian app became good uh, for mobile. And then I started hit a strong like limiting factor um, where I wanted to write in it because of the Kanban board view. And I couldn't link the notes with the new ideas I had. So that's it. If you liked the video, thumbs up. If you loved it, you can subscribe, hit the bell, all that stuff. YouTube will let you know stuff happened and you can come watch my videos. That'd be nice. Join me Fridays for the summer at 6 a.m. streaming. You can become a patron, patreon.com slash Curtis McHale. If you can, if you can't, don't worry about it. Uh, you can take one of my courses. There's links to all those below uh, in, uh, uh, where are they? They're at Skillshare. That's where they're at Skillshare. Uh, and you can go directly there and create an account. I get some affiliate fees for it at curtismichael.ca slash Skillshare. That's it. Have a good day. Oh, you can join me streaming. I'm just going to answer those questions now. Ciao. So one thing I didn't do for those on stream is I forgot to write down when I started. So I'm going to write down when I ended at least. And it is at 20 minutes. Okay, so many questions. Let me see. What theme am I using? Uh, uh, Groovebox. Chris, 
Is the calendar a plugin for Obsidian? Yes, it is. The calendar is, I think the calendar plugin, community plugins. These are my installed ones. C-A-L, yep, calendar, that's what it is. Um, templates are pain and craft, copy and pasting from one document to another. Yeah, that is a pain in the butt for sure. Templator is excellent. Uh, I did a video about, I recorded on my last stream. I'm not sure when it comes out because I'm kind of out of order now. <clears throat> yeah, you know, no plan three, David. So I had tried, David says for everyone, add to the broadcast. I switched from note plan three to obsidian log stack, but I missed the note plan layout visual, but too many advantages in the other two. So I tried note plan two a bunch and it was really nice. And I keep meaning to look at note plan three but I actually just don't need it, so it's harder for me to do that, to be honest. Move from Rome to Craft and then to Obsidian. <coughs> Storm Breeze, I move from Rome to Craft and then to Obsidian. I do not want to pay for another year of Rome. Fair enough. Um, when Rome, Rome, Rome kind of locked down, I couldn't even try it. So that's when I heard about it and wanted to try it, and I couldn't. Uh, could Note Plan 3 a good, be a good option, uh, Ryu? Uh, as Kimmy. Yeah, I think it probably can. Do I have no plan three? I have set app. No plan two is in set app. Oh, set app is on the wrong screen. There's no plan three come yet. What version is this? Yeah, it's three. So one way to try it, Ryu, is if you, you guys ever seen set app? This is set app. Uh, it offers like Tons of applications. I have, what do I have on this Mac? All of these are installed here. All of these. So I would look at that. I would look at that. Area, why do I do these streams? I do these streams because I'm lazy. Um, I do these streams because it lets me answer questions. I enjoy the interaction. I get a lot of emails and other things or questions, and it lets me say, hey, just go to the stream. And I also record my videos that you'll see on YouTube later. So that's why. Oh, no plan three accommodates plugins now, so that'd be interesting. That's good. Anyway, I'm gonna have another video to record, and then I can just really dig into questions. We have two more videos to record. There. Publish this one. Migrate from Craft to Obsidian. So I'm gonna show you what I did. Of course, at this moment. There we go. Does Obsidian Mobile have an Apple Watch app? I don't know, I don't have an Apple Watch. <clears throat> I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no, but I don't know. If you're thinking of quick capture, you could probably do a shortcut um, to quick capture to the proper spot. Although I've done this, where's my iPad? So I did this a while ago for my iPad, my iPhone. Uh, where did I put it? Uh, what did I call it? No idea. Here you go. So with iPadOS 14, I guess I can change this. Um, I had to bookmark a file folder location in Toolbox Pro. I guess I don't need that anymore because I can do an arbitrary file location now with iPadOS 15 and that's what I'm using um, because I'm on the beta. So yeah, I just set it up. You ask for text with a new idea with an ask for input. Um, so you might be able to do something with shortcuts on your Apple Watch that way, because it's communicating with your device. So that's what I would probably look at. Uh, for ACC, for ACC, whatever that means. So yeah, next one I'm gonna record is about migrating from I have Slack open. That's a work app. I'm not working today. From Craft to Obsidian. So let me write down when this actually starts this time. So I'll make my editing easier. Start. And I'm going to tell you about the process that I used. And then we'll have time for more questions. Seven likes, that's actually like my biggest like so far on the stream. 
So thank you all. Thank you all. We're gonna record this for those who came later. And then one other video, and then I'm just around for questions. I want to show off iPadOS 15 for people. Um, some of the things I'm doing with it already. Uh, and this is not, it will not be an exhaustive feature thing. I'll just show you some of the things I'm doing. I want to see if I can program some keys to my mechanical keyboard for the globe key uh, and what my options are for that. So I already use caps lock as escape. I've been doing that for years. Caps lock is not my option. <laughs> um, I don't think I can perform, do right control, which I actually really never use. So I don't think I can do right control. Which is possible on the Ant Pro 2 because on the Ant Pro 2, so these keys right here are actually arrow keys if you tap them, and if you hold them, they become their real keys. So if I held them and could remap it, then, but it has multiple layers, so I could program like, literally, I could program all the, uh, what is it, the keyboard commands into like uh, function one Q W E R T, like all, I could just program it right across there. We'll just have to see. I'll have to think of it though, because I am also Dvorak. I'm gonna just figure out how that's gonna work. Anyway, migrating from Craft to Obsidian. Let's talk about what we do. And we're starting at, what's the time frame on this? This is 26 minutes, we'll call it. 26, oh. oh. Welcome. Today we're going to talk about how do you migrate all your notes from Craft into Obsidian. So I did this just a little while ago, and it's pretty easy, but there are some obvi not obvious, obvious pitfalls you could make if you're trying to be smart about it. So don't be smart about it. That's what we're going to tell you. Before we dive into that, a few ways you can support the channel. Number one is to become a patron, patreon.com slash kale. Number two is to take one of my courses. Uh, you can go to Skillshare, find one of my courses by going to curtismichael.ca slash Skillshare. Links below as well though, so most likely you're interested in my Zettel casting course, link below. Um, we stream Friday at 6 a.m. for the summer, Pacific, Pacific. But let's dive in and talk about migrating from Craft to Obsidian. So let's start with Craft. First thing you need to do is export your documents. So I think we'll just go Command A, and then we go to uh, Export All Documents. We're going to go to Markdown. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's all documents, to be honest to me. Now that I've tried that, because it should be a lot more like yeah, that's right. So it's like an uh, so here's good one that you need to know to actually scroll down for everything. And I probably did this the first few times because it's like a ever scrolling thing. I should forget what that is. I forgot what that is at the moment. Well, I build these for web sites, load more buttons. So you can just like infinite scroll. It's an infinite scroll. There we go. Now we're at the bottom. And so let's go. Ugh, now I gotta go back to the top. I'm gonna go shift A now. All documents. Does it tell me? Yeah, that's right. 9,800 or 1,900 documents. So now we export them. This takes a little bit. It's not terribly long, but it's gonna take a little bit. So I should just give you some music. Maybe Jeopardy. Do, 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 do. I can answer a stream question, or at least comment on stream. Stormbreeze says, ha, I'm doing this on Rome Research right now, exporting all my documents into Markdown to move them to Obsidian. So I've actually already done this. You can see in the background, I'll let that finish, is that I have a craft folder here. This craft folder is simply legacy. I just literally took my entire craft database, dropped it in the Obsidian vault, and you're pretty much done except for organization. And this is where I mess things up. If you're gonna do any organization, don't get smart. Don't grab your folder necessarily. So once we're done, I'm gonna call it craft export uh, July 2, 2021. Drop it my downloads. I'm not gonna touch it now though, because I don't really need to because I've actually already done this. <clears throat> so the biggest issue I did is I had, uh, so see my tags folder, I basically grabbed all the notes in there and moved them, but that broke all the links. So once I realized that I, put them all back 
and then I realized that I had basically doubled it. So if I go through my tags, you'll actually see that there is um, dash one in a bunch of them. So I've actually, I'm going back through and fixing this too. Oh, I gotta find, of course I won't find one when we're on, you know, recording it. But there's a bunch that got doubled. Oh, there's a bunch that got doubled and it just is a pain in the butt for me because now I have notes in two places, right? Reuse and reuse too. So stuff will be linking, and I can check my backlinks panel to reuse two. Reuse one has one thing in it. So I can come in here and I can go to reuse. Oh, I don't want that. I can come in here and go to reuse, and really I want reuse two. Done. So now reuse should have nothing linking to it, and I can delete it and reuse two. Come back in here and say done. Now I have updated all my links to reuse. So that's the biggest thing. If you're gonna do anything to edit your files later, to move them around, to change your organization, do it inside Obsidian. Do not get smart about it. It's like, do not say, oh, I can do some grep search or anything like this from the command line. Just don't do it because it's only gonna mess up your database and you're gonna then you're gonna have to do even more work to work yourself out of it later. So export everything from Markdown. Once you're done that, drop it in your Obsidian vault. Then just move it in your Obsidian vault because the links will stay updated. That's it. If you liked the video, thumbs up below. If you loved it, subscribe, hit the bell. YouTube will let you know what happened. Give me a thumbs up. I already said that. Uh, support the channel, become a patron, patreon.com slash Curtis McHale. Uh, we stream Fridays, 6 p.m. Uh, 6 a.m. Pacific uh, for the summer, at least, to avoid the heat. Um, and I'm going to answer questions on the stream right after this. So I see the thing going by with the comments. That's it. There's courses below. Settle cast and course below. Have a good day. So we ended this at 31 minutes, 32, we'll call it 32 questions. Uh -huh. Nazar says, so you'll no longer use in craft for creating and connecting your book notes, and I will appreciate a lot. You tell me which features does the iPad Obsidian not miss. There's just a few plugins. That's it. Um, like one or two plugins don't work. That's all I can tell you. Uh, the Outliner plugin, what else doesn't work? Checklist plugin. So checklist is this one here. Right here. It's just pulling in all like my undone checklists, so like my daily notes. That's it. Uh, that's it. It doesn't support on iPadOS like multi-windowing well. It does split screens, but it doesn't do multi-windowing. So yeah, that's annoying. We'll see if that comes. But like the split system in uh, in it is so nice, right? I can just go split and then I can split again. Split horizontally, right? So I can do a lot of work like that, but it doesn't support like the shelf. So if I click here, in iPadOS 15, if I had multi-windows, I should have that, but it doesn't do multi-windows. So you might see that in Safari. Oh, Safari, that's not what I want. Uh, let's just make it take full screen. And I don't have multiple windows here, but if I went, so now I should have multiple windows. No, it's just a tab. So again, we're working with iPadOS 15 still. So that's the biggest thing it doesn't do, unfortunately. But other than that, uh, David, migrating out of Rome is not real clean. If you're a perfectionist and are willing to clean up notes, you'll be okay. It's good to know. Ryu, I did love the magnetic visa mount. I love it too. I'm using it right here, right now. It's great. So I built that oh, a while ago. It's just basically a piece of plywood with an iPad top cover glued to it and my iPad magnets on. I love it. Uh -huh. I love it. I built a few for people. So if you really wanted one, I could build one, but you gotta pay for shipping and it's not necessarily cheap. So now I've improved it. I have like knurled knobs for the back and I did the last one to both Visa standards. So I'm reusing, I mostly just had daily notes and a couple of article templates for my thesis. Oh, in your old system, yeah. I had like, what you saw, 1800, almost 2000 notes. Yeah, Richard, so I really like the daily notes. Oh, that is, there you go, Richard. I've been resisting using Obsidian daily, weekly, monthly notes. Finally gave them a try this week. I don't know how I did without them. So I have done before, oh, I've got the notebook right here. Done a lot of note-taking journaling, blood journal. 
and I have done daily notes in them. I'm just trying to make sure I did them like. Uh, 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 this, yeah, do them like this. So I do like time blocking on one side and then my note on the other. Yeah, so I would do, uh, and that was really useful. I find daily notes just as good, just as good. So, I like daily notes as well. Uh, I use them daily. Oh, that was lame. My kid to say, was that a dad joke? That was lame. Uh, which is out of. What movie for those who are here? Who knows? I'm gonna say that was that a dad joke? Cause that was lame. Probably have to have children to know that, but I do have children, so all right. And there we go. Okay, writing. I've done migrating from craft to obsidian. Uh, okay, the drag and drop on the Kanban doesn't work very well with iPad OS 15. Yes, I am using it for all my non-job, David. David asks, am I using Obsidian for all my non-job related task management? I think so. Well, I'm getting hot in here, hang on. There we go. Um, yeah, uh, am I, am I? Sort of, I am or have been right now. I haven't been loving it. So big thing I haven't been loving is possibly resolved by the checklist plugin. So if I go to do and I say thing, it should show up. So if I could spell, so it shows up over here, which is good. But that sort of resolves it. But that was kind of the big thing. Like when I looked back and said, okay, what about a task I didn't do a couple days ago? I just had kind of lost it. And that's no good. I'm putting in my headphones because then I don't get like, it says they're only at 80%. That's weird. Cause they're, you know, all night plugged in or batteried in anyway. So yeah, I don't love how it doesn't carry things forward. Well, something like OmniFocus does a better job of that. Um, but all of my, uh, and so most of my task management, I've talked about this before. It's like, here's my camping list. I got to like do some stuff to like after camping, some district home repairs, home, right? Get a new barbecue cover, recycle monitors of cable, recycle some stuff, get some solar lights, writing for work. We'll skip that one. Obsidian, this is just kind of what I'm doing. So as I'm repairing my tag notes, I just put like, use tag notes uh, on files in the or I like I finish up to E and sorting my notes again. So, all right, here's just some other things I wanna do uh, there. Do I do, still do time blocking, David? Um, I want to, I want to. Am I still doing time blocking as well? I really want to. The thing I have found hard as a manager of a team is that I have a lot of like just random stuff come up. Um, where they're like, ah, some client needs to get on the call and like, I'm the manager or something. That's really me. So I find it hard that way. I do block out Fridays and just say I'm busy on Fridays. <laughs> I'm not around. Don't talk to me. Uh, I do ignore my phone a lot. That's something I'm going to probably set up in focus mode so that only certain people can message me during work and like not my friends. Um, I've already done a cycling, which let me set up my bike computer to actually allow alerts through for people like uh, my wife and my, that's it. John, impressed with the pace of the updates that the craft team is making. Yeah, they're doing a great job. Like I, I don't deny that in any fashion. They are doing a great, a great job um, of making updates well. But when I started doing writing, they don't have a Kanban system, and I just wanted to link to all my notes. So I just that's it. That's it. And now I've got this from my Obsidian setup. So to honestly, if you like craft, stick with it. I don't need to change because I change. I don't care. In fact, stick like, unless you have like a, oh, this is so much better somewhere else. Stick exactly where you are. Don't change because I did. I just telling you what I've done. That's it. So our next video is uh, going to be one called Questions Connectors Ask. It is about well, exactly that. What you should ask yourself when you are trying to connect notes together. I'm going to talk about collector's fallacy. I'm going to talk about ABC lists. 
Oh, thanks. I like the shirt too. Um, there's a few questions here. How does this fit with stuff I already know? What's the counterpoint to the idea? I'll talk a little bit more at length about that. What am I going to do about it? And then putting it into practice. So it's a bit of a longer one. I love deep work. I want to do more time blocking. I want to do more deep work. It's hard as a manager though. So I even find sometimes as a manager, I'll get like, I'll set aside two hours to like do some hard code problem they really want me to work on because we're not big enough that I only have to manage. I do have to write code. And almost invariably in the middle of it, I'll have someone be like, hey, Curtis, I need you to do this too. <laughs> like, I, I, but I can't, like I literally can't, so. And occasionally if I don't reply within like an hour or two, I get like, they, they email the boss and me at the same time. And then the boss, because they told him, oh, hey, he haven't heard from him in a while. I'm like, well, a while has been like an hour, so, you know. There's a lot of stuff they want me to take care of all the time and everyone says whatever their thing is the most priority and I just ignore a lot of it because that's all I can do. Because I literally just can't do everything. So, like I was supposed to hire someone last month and I couldn't hire someone and launch the sites that they told me I had to launch because sales made commitments to my time that. So I just had to like work crazy days, which is why I took, well, I'm taking it like yesterday off for Canada Day, today off because I go camping all next week and why would I just work for one day? Um, but then I, there's a few days I just kind of took it slow and just like yeah you know took my wife up for lunch and did other stuff because i was like you know i worked a couple 16 hour days i'm taking some time off and nobody can stop me <laughs> really because <laughs> here i am <laughs> here i am everyone else is in florida we have one person other person in canada out in vancouver um but that's it i just didn't even take my phone with me because i didn't want it <laughs> all right so next video questions Connectors ask. Let's review my notes quickly. All right, I think I'm ready. So we're gonna start this around, then I'm just gonna talk about iPadOS 15, probably 42 minutes, we'll call it. 42. This just really helps my editing. <clears throat> to edit all, all three of these before I go away to camping on Monday too, so. If I do that sun, I usually do that Sunday mornings. Uh, maybe I'll try to edit the videos today too though. So just get them out of the way, get them up on YouTube, and then I'll do like the um, thumbnail and stuff like that. Later, later. All right, let's get going. Welcome. Today we're gonna to talk about questions connectors ask because I want to be a connector. I don't want to be just a collector. And what's a collector? So a collector merely grabs research, data, whatever, just collects it. And that's the goal is just to have it. They don't actually do anything with it. I don't wanna be that. So clearly I'm like, I'm on YouTube. I'm like, well, clearly I don't wanna be that because I'm producing stuff right now. So before we get into that, a few ways you can support the channel though. Number one is become a patron, patreon.com slash Curtis Scale. If you can, if you can't, don't worry about it. Uh, other ways to support, take my courses. You can go to uh, curtismchale.ca slash Skillshare, become a Skillshare member, find my courses there. There's actually a direct link to my Zettelkasten course below. That's the one you're most likely interested in. Uh, and I have one coming up uh, that I'm working on, on just digging into Obsidian, like how to use Obsidian specifically. Uh, we stream Friday, 6 a.m. Pacific because I want to beat the heat and uh, that's it. And it's still even actually warm in here. And I ran my air conditioner all night, but I'm still actually warm. Uh, that's it. Let's dive into what questions you can ask or how you can become a connector instead of merely being a collector. Okay, so collector's fallacy. We're gonna review this beginning, but we'll talk about it again. It is the act of merely collecting things, of saying I just want to have uh, all this data and the goal is a lot of research. Actually, so years ago, when Evernote first came out, I remember like being super impressed. They could like do stuff uh, uh, like 
pull text out of images and I merely collected things and I did like nothing with it after that. I didn't have like a good research system or anything like that. I just collected a bunch of data and my goal was like, look at all the notes I have and that's it. Um, and that's just lame, it's just lame. So that's not what we want to do. Now today I'm gonna to talk about the questions I really ask myself for the exercises I go through to make more connections and stuff. And the first one is ABC lists. What's this one? So this is, I'm gonna call it ABC lists because I speak English, that's our alphabet but is to write down on a piece of paper or in a template in your research system, um, A through Z. And then uh, if you're, as you look at one topic and as you look at that one topic, write down a word for each letter and connect them, make the connections. That's it. That's really going to help you force your thinking on a topic. When you try to come up with something for X and you're like, I don't know, xylophone, how does xylophone fit into this? Um, that's it. <laughs> and it's gonna help you think through it so that you can make better connections. So you really just have have it all in your mind and you've really thought in about it, about that idea hard or well. So next question I really ask myself is how does this fit in with stuff I already know? So when I read The Dip um, recently, a couple months back anyways, uh, I really felt like it and range were telling you two different things. Uh, and I felt they contradicted each other in some fundamental ways. And so I said, hey, this doesn't fit. And here's why I started writing about the dip versus range. Like why don't they fit? And the video that came out of that is actually, actually they do fit pretty well. That's what came out of it. The videos, they do fit pretty well. So the process of really digging into them and saying, here's how they contradict. Let me realize that uh, whereas the dip uh, is about like the whole system where you, you know, you're getting a little bit of success and it kind of dips and you're not getting as much. I'm even saying that on YouTube right now, right? My subscriber counts are not going up as fast as they once were. So it kind of goes down and then you see, oh, rocket launch again. So the dip is talking about the whole range of a career or um, success in some fashion and uh, range is talking about a small section of it. So range is talking about all getting, like getting all your diverse experience. So probably what's happening in your dip area um, until you hit that, oh, now my success all has kind of come together. My various experiences have come together and now I'm seeing a whole bunch of success. If I hadn't really tried to fit these two ideas together and see how they contradicted, I never would have come up with that insight. Next up, what is the counterpoint to this idea? What is the exact opposite of it? Years ago, I read a great article called The Other Side Is Not Dumb. And they are, it just summarizes its main point right in the top. The other side, the people that disagree with you are not dumb. They think about it differently. So when you encounter an idea, uh, especially an idea you agree with, the first thing you need to ask yourself is if you could describe the counterpoint to it with the same fervor with which you um, have the points that you probably agree with. So one thing I did recently is I, ha I picked up a book, what's it called? Um, Irreversible Damage, which from what I have looked at was what I would naturally agree with growing up in a strict Christian household, that transgender stuff is bad, just bad, that's it. Um, so the first, I haven't read that book. At the same time, I reached out to my local used bookstore and said, hey, I can you give me five, six, whatever books that say the LGBTQ plus community, uh, transgender community, I, I know that's in there, um, is good. Can you like just recommend them? And I bought basically every book they recommended. That's what I did. I bought them all. And so since then, I have read all of most of those books. I've lent a couple out to friends, which I, who knows if I'm going to get back because their children are working through transgender uh, stuff. So just gave books to them to help them with it. That's what I read first because those are the ideas I am less likely to agree with growing up in a strict Christian household. And uh, I would say it's really helped my views change. I was already leaning towards like, hey, love is love, who cares? Um, and I would say I'm firmly in that camp now. Uh, and then we'll see what I read with Irreversible Damage whenever I get to it. Because I've got a few others that I have to read first so I can explain, we'll say, the other side uh, of the argument better as well as I could hold up my side of the argument. And yeah, that is probably one of the keys. It's probably one of my favorite things to do is look at what someone I would disagree with would say. Something else we learned in the Data Detective I will be recording a video on that in a few weeks. That is our book club book. If you join us in Discord, link below. Um, is that really asking someone to explain their idea? Number one, it can help you learn something. Number two, also helps them say, hey, maybe I don't understand this as well. Um, they cited some interesting studies that basically said, like, how to use a toilet. And people said, oh, I totally know how to use that. And when they were asked to explain it, they realized they probably didn't know. Um, and yeah. 
And what it really does is it reduces polarization between parties. You end up with something as you discuss this better, say, please explain that to me. Well, how would you do that? And start digging deeper and deeper into the idea. At some point, you'll even say, hey, you really do understand this, and now I have more knowledge. Or they'll say, I really don't understand this. And I suppose they could get defensive. But if they're a smart, reasonable person, which I hope that's who you hang out with, or who would engage in a discussion like that, they'll say, you know what, I don't understand this as good as I thought I would, and so I need to you know, step back and think more about it. So my final question that I really uh, like to do is what am I gonna do about it? So with this new knowledge, what am I going to change in my life? So I actually talk about this in, um, that's actually one of the key questions, and what's the book called again? <coughs> How to read a book. What am I gonna do about this with my new knowledge? I really like that one when I finish a book, like what am I gonna do with the knowledge in this book? And sometimes I look at it and say, nothing. The book was lame, but sometimes it's really good. Um, so in Kurt Vonnegut's, oh, I've got the book here. Let me show you. Of course, it's under a bunch of stuff. In Kurt Vonnegut's Player Piano, which I read for work. It talks about a fully mechanized society where people have uh, all their money taken care of, right? They've got basic income, they get TVs, they get all these other things, it's all supplied, but their spending, their discretionary spending is very low. When you look at their overall, what they would make if they didn't have to, if they had to pay for these things, it would actually be a lot, but discretionary spending is low. Most people, uh, it's based on IQ, whether you are like an engineer, someone value valuable society versus um, the reeks and wrecks, which just, you know, like makes your fire hydrants work. Um, and at some point a machine comes along that does your job better. You're just, you're out. That's it. You're just out. Um, so when you look at that, like, what am I going to do with this knowledge right here? Uh, that's an interesting thought. It also makes me think too, the GitHub just released Copilot, which in some ways will do that. It's like having a, uh, pair programming junior developer who has ADHD. I think a friend said who tried it. He didn't find it that useful, but it's also... If, like if I participate in Copilot, I am basically for free giving GitHub more information with which to train its algorithm to charge me for a service later. It's something to think about. What am I gonna do with the information there that people don't have meeting, right? So when I looked at, um, what's another book? Uh, Man's Search for Meeting by Viktor Frankl. One of the key points in that was that as people didn't have meeting, they, they kind of gave up when they lost the meaning to live in, this is in concentration, concentration camps, which is far worse than you, know, you or I have most likely dealt with. Um, and so when you lose meaning, like, what does that, what does that mean? When I've thought through that, um, uh, in, uh, uh what is it? Uh, with the war on normal people by Andrew Yang, uh, which is a good book. He talked, uh, that, about that and showing that a lot of central America, as in like the core of America, of USA, um, lost meaning because they lost a lot of the jobs that were formerly theirs and then they're looking for meaning. And so then I, th when you think about that, I can see a clear line between like losing some of your meaning in the uh, cent center of the US because you don't have work because and then, then what's your purpose? And then joining some of these radical groups that we see uh, popping up predominantly with white people because white people have a good history of being idiots, um, especially white men. And you can see, well, I don't condone these groups at all. You can definitely see like, if I have no meaning, and that's really what this book is about. Like people have no meaning and they start a revolt, right? That's what happens here. Um, you can really see like, if I have no meaning, I'm looking for some part of meaning. And when these radical groups come up and give me meaning and say, it's not my fault, it's someone else's fault, then I want to buy into that. So asking myself questions like this have really helped me think about that. Um, like draw connections and saying I can see a straight path from lack of meaning to radical groups, um, to an anti-vaccination, anti-mask, like while there's no science to support it, it gives people meaning. And so maybe they're willing to overlook the science part of it, um, unfortunately. And I see a path towards this. And so then can I engage better in discussion like that? And clearly in some places we don't engage in discussion because it's just, I mean, there's one guy who is local that I just see comes up to talk about. I'm like, I literally do not talk to you about this because it's you're just going to yell at me if I don't agree with you. And that's not a discussion I want to engage in. But otherwise, like, how can I engage in good pro, um, proactive discussion with people? And these are the questions I ask myself. That's it. If you like the video, thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell. YouTube will let you know what happened. And honestly, turn off your notifications on YouTube because you don't really want them. You should be doing your work, reading, writing, something like that. Uh, other ways to support the channel, join me streaming Fridays, 6 a.m. Pacific, where I'll answer questions. I'm going to show off iPadOS 15 after this. Uh, other ways to support the channel are take one of my courses uh, on 
on Skillshare. There's a link to that below. Specifically, my Zettelcasting course is one you're most likely interested in, or my upcoming course on getting started with Obsidian. And that's really it. Have a good day. Try not to fall in today. Ciao. All right, so let's end it at 55 minutes, we'll call it. 55, oh, oh. All right. So what is up next? What's up next is I want to, let's go back, record. I'm gonna move that over. There we go. So next up, I need to check out programming my Anpro 2. Always on the wrong screen first. And pro to download. Can I program a globe key in? Is my question so that I can start doing that uh, for what is it? Mac OS. What? Is there really no downloads? Software downloads? Hmm, let's open skit. Interesting. So they rebranded. Okay, so Hexcore is right. Why would they do a redirect? That's silly. Why wouldn't they do a redirect? Download opens. Allow. I just haven't done it on this computer yet, so. Uh, downloads. Is it, is it M1 compatible with the other question? Because I'm on an M1 machine. Are there any other questions about research? We'll get to iPad OS 15 in a minute. I want to make sure that I can do this or what I can do with this. Opens. Copying. <laughs> Copied. Did it go? Oh, there we go. Okay. Please connect. I gotta go get another cable to connect this keyboard. A to C cable. Turn off 
the Bluetooth and Pro 2. Move my coffee. Stormbreeze, you say that what jerks your lack uh, an emergency on your part does not uh, constitute an emergency on my part. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Sometimes it's clients, though, that come in. Why is this not coming up? Uh, I agree. I've told my boss that. He broadly agrees. It's just getting that stop. Well, occasionally, I've had like a, because they're on Eastern Time, I'll have like a 7 a.m. When are you coming to look at this? And I just ignore them. I only respond via Reich for emergencies like that, for non emergencies like that. Um, let's kit M. One. Does that actually work? <laughs> this doesn't seem to be working. Let's open it up again. Opens. Could also be because the easily accessible USB port is not. There we go. We got it now. Settings, layout. How do I do this? Oh, right here. There we go. It's been a while. Function one. Arrows I don't need. Character. Is there a globe key? Media, keypad, mouse. There is not a globe key. Hmm. There's a Windows key. Or command. Eh. Hmm. So it looks like there's no globe key. The other thing, Stormbreeze, is that my like company culture takes time to change, so it just takes time to change. If I make key works pretty like my keyboard works well otherwise, but hmm. Does not look like I have an option for this. What about on QMK? 
wait, does that just say that I can configure this with QMK? So what are we doing now? We're just seeing if I can set that up on my, oh, and you, if you can hear my door whistling briefly. I don't know what's creating all that suction, but something is all probably Maybe I'll let the back door open for my, my friend's dog. <clears throat> or QMK, so can I do QMK? It's QMK. K iPad code key doesn't have it. That's not what I want. I can turn the globe key into a physical escape key. My friend Josh, they'll be curious how to see how the globe key will work for custom keyboards and iPadOS once flash. The plank is literally plug and play, wonderfully simple. Hmm. So he's a plank, uh, which is a cool keyboard. Actually, right for the site, help build it. So just letting you know. As a disclaimer, uh, we talked about this. This is, I have the Moonlander as my keyboard. So I should just go to. What can I do with a Moonlander? Uh, Chrome, because that works better with the Moonlander software. Moonlander program. Uh, Moonlander keyboard. Of course, there's another Moonlander. It's the actual Moonlander. Congratulations, you just got it. Now what's the programming thing? Ben Velik's videos are great too. All that set up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Starting to type. Open an Oryx. I just want to sign into Oryx. Sign in. Open one password. Ugh, it's gonna want my master password. Sign in. Is there a globe key on this? I could use this key. Why isn't it letting me? Oh, that's right. Download. I gotta modify the layout. Modify. There is no globe key here either. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So I don't think I can program in either of my keyboards, unfortunately. It sucks. It sucks. So then I should really look at, let's just unplug this now. Come back over to my iPad. Yeah, it's on. There we go. So then we can go into settings and our options are for, Ah, oh, keyboard, uh, hardware keyboard, modifier keys, caps lock. It's like the really only only one I can remap. Control, 
or the use control in where else do I use it? Use it in Obsidian. I use it in Obsidian. So why do I want to do this? So the biggest reason I want to do this is stuff like hold on the command key. It is an iPad OS with our multitasking it is the app switcher. Uh, then I can also do stuff like what is it? I can open up this and I can hold uh, globe. Oh, I don't have control. That's the problem. <laughs> I need the control key. Hmm. I need the control key. At the same time, I need globe and I need control. So I need this to be control. I thought you could change the escape key as well. Command, I wish you could do one that was like two. Like, honestly, control could be globe end for me. Choose the action I want to perform. I want to do control and globe. It's not going to work, is it? So that would mean that I need my control key to be my control key. I need caps lock P key to be globe. And then I could do the multitasking like this, where you hit, uh, so I'm gonna hit, for me it's caps lock and control, but that's globe control, right? I should be able to tile it off to the side. It's not doing it. Unread. Where did I see all the multitasking actual keyboard commands before? Uh, was it when I was looking at Safari, you actually showed them all? No, it did not. Hmm. So I go this, we don't have them all. App switcher, next app, notification center. Show keyboard shortcuts. So the globe M. Here's the question, is it because my globe is not working or is it because, what's one I see here? App switcher, globe up arrow. It's because globe must not be working for me. That actually set it right. Caps lock is globe, okay. That should work. Clearly not working though on this. I wonder if enough cable. Okay, so that's gonna suck to be honest. I can't use at my ergonomic desk setup. We're gonna uh, make a lose my iPad for a second. I might. Oh. Space. Almost, almost. There we go. Get my iPad set up here. I've got some more cable I can fish out, sort of. There we go. Oh, I don't like that bend. I need to grab some books. This will be terribly unstable. But I do need to raise my iPad up to make it work. I guess that's what we'll do. So I lost my iPad connection, did I? Did I just lose my iPad? I did just lose my iPad. It's no longer connected. Well, that was lame. Now I can't even show it because I just lost my iPad. like fish around under my desk. Maybe I just tweaked the cable. It says it's plugging in still. There we go, iPad Pro, came back, good. So what you should be able to do is I should be able to say, I come in here, there you go, and I can tile. So then I could put tile with, so it's another thing I've done with YouTube, and I'm gonna go to my watch later queue. All right, so that is nice, and that is 
globe uh, control uh, arrow to like pick which side, so left or right. And you can do uh, was it globe up to get to my app switcher. And in here you can even go like, I can switch the pairs. I could pair it with uh, obsidian now if I wanted. Come in here, that's nice. Uh, what else do I have for the shelf? So the other thing that I've really liked is, let me open up obsidian over here. Um, so I can see what I want to do today. I can't program, that's what I wanted to do. Uh, what about the Moonlander? Focus modes, that's the other cool thing that I've really liked. So focus modes, you set up, well, not, you don't have to necessarily go into control center. Um, but you have them in control center, so I have writing right now. Uh, if I want to do startup, this is one that I want to automate. So I can do startup, and right now it does nothing. It does nothing. But I want to go to shortcuts, and we'll go to automation. And I'm going to hit plus, and we'll start a personal automation. I just found this out last night that you could even do it like this. So. And I want to do it when I am in do not disturb. When turning on next, not just do not disturb. When do not disturb is on. Oh, sorry, I wanna not just do not disturb. I wanna say when startup is on, when turning on next, to add an action, I want to open Obsidian. Or, oh, sorry, I want to go. What do I wanna do? We want to open a window. Split screen apps. Split screen between app and app. Okay, so there are bugs in this. Ratio, that's fine. Half, half, actually I wanna do one third, two third. And I want it to be obsidian. And OmniFocus, the beta. And that's what I want to do next. I'm turning things on. I don't want to ask. I just want to do it. Don't ask. So the goal is that I come into my iPad in the morning and I see this. So now if I come up here, I should be able to go to, well, startup is already on. So let's go to writing. So writing opened up. I don't know what it did because I clicked on things too fast. Let's go to startup. That's what I want for startup. Good. Um, so then I can like come into the morning and I can see what's on my daily note. And I can see what's on a task list besides. So this is why I say uh, to people that are, have asked like, are you actually using uh, Obsidian as your task manager? I'm kind of in flux right now. I'm still changing, I'm not sure. Uh, the answer is yes, but I'm not sure that's gonna stay. Right now I'm kind of playing with the OmniFocus beta as well. Which I like, although I don't, it doesn't have a lot of uh, keyboard commands for iPad. I should have more. I wanna be able to like move stuff into a new project, not just create a new project, and it doesn't have those yet, so. That sucks, that sucks. It needs to, it needs to have like full keyboard support. That's what it really should have. It doesn't right now though. That's good. And the other thing I have for if I'm going to be writing, so I actually have a focus picker, so I can come in here and say writing. That's a shortcut, and it opens up my, um, what is it? Just like my writing note. It's also supposed to, and it's not doing this right now. Supposed to. Where is it? Focus mode. Um. Startup. I actually don't need this one. This is the one I was trying to do before, but it wasn't working. Because it's an automation, not a delete. No, I don't want to delete. To delete that one. Delete shortcut. So this is my focus picker, and it comes in and says, like, turn writing on, play my running. It should be playing my running music. It's not. Uh, and then it opens up my Obsidian Vault for entertainment. 
That's when I choose entertainment, it just turns that on or off, it just turns focus off. So that's what I have right now. Because it's like this is faster than like up here choosing. Now I choose, you know, whatever work, entertainment, something like that. So this is faster to say I want to do entertainment now. And it switches to my entertainment screen, which is nice. Or I can say, go back to writing. Writing, open this up, which is nice. Uh, so that's why I like focus modes, they're great. What I should do is show you how to set one up, because I don't think I have work set up yet. So work, get started, and set up a focus mode. So next, uh, I don't want Christine, I do want my wife, I do want, I don't really want some of the work people, but this is super lame. Like, how come I can't go through and find people by their last name? Like, why can't I search this? This is a super waste of time. I want Denise. Uh, and I have Holly in there too. I should have Holly. So these are work people. Do I have Holly in here? I don't know. I don't see it. Tom's already in there. That's good. That's my boss. I should have Chris. Do I have Chris? Charlie. Do I have Chris's last name? Yeah, I do. It's under M. Like, why can't I search this? This is like takes way longer than it should. M. Oh. All that M A is in here. And then you find McHale's. Like, I gotta go through all the McHale's. I should have Eden in there. My daughter just in case she has like an emergency. Um, Chris, president of the company, good. So I've got that. So these people can alert me now. I'll allow these six people, including to come revisit this. What do I want for alerts in here? Nothing. No, I should probably let Slack alert me because that is what we use for work stuff. So that means Slack can alert me now if I'm in work mode and allow one app. Allow for time sensitive, sure. So this is, if it detects like a delivery coming and you think it is a time sensitive one for that. So, oh, stretch. I'm gonna like slide around now to actually show you things. Done, that's it. It's ready to go now. I could even choose a home screen. Now I don't have a home screen set up for that yet. So let me just hide notification badges. I could do, so you do custom pages, change pages. So these two are already like custom home screens and these are just all my other ones. Let's maybe start with this one because that's one that I would need. So now I'm going to turn focus mode off. Just by clicking that. And we can go to actually work. So I actually don't need this. Edit home screen. Remove. I don't want my children's reading app. Remove. And I don't want that. What I do want on here is uh, Gmail. What I do want on here is Slack. And what I do want on here is Rike. So those are really the only apps I need. I wish I could hide the dock too at the same time because I don't really need the dock. I actually almost never use the dock to be honest. I probably do want music because I often use my iPad to run music while I'm working. And then what should these have widgets? Touch the screen. 
So let's see, does Slack have a widget? Is there a widget here that's better? Nope. Does Gmail have one? Nope. Does Rike have a Nope. Music? Music has a widget. There you go. I could use my mega widget for music instead. Done. And then I would actually just go edit home screen, remove from home screen. I don't need that. So now I have a work home screen set up as well. So if I go to, actually, you know what I probably also want is I want my focus picker because that is the faster way to change things. So let's go to shortcuts and add a shortcut. And now we tap on it, Apple frames, and I want focus picker done. Okay, so now I'm done. So now I can easily switch between my focus picker and my, like all my focuses. So if again, if I wanna to go to entertainment, uh, or this is beta software, there we go, entertainment, and I can go to entertainment. So that would also mean you need to go to shortcuts, and I have my focus picker, and let's add an item. I just want that to go, oh no. Okay, this is work. All right, so she's actually Marquenta. Marquenta, can I drag it? Oh, I can't drag them around. So let's go with Marquentum. I don't really like that. I really want Marquentum off. So then I would take off down here, Markentum, I'd say uh, focus. Another bug I've noticed, oh, it's not a bug today. So sometimes when scrolling this list, it will just lock up and you gotta like click in a disclosure thing. So I'm gonna put in here and I'm going to turn uh, work on until turned off. There we go. So now if we go to my focus picker, it should have Markentum in there. And there we go. And I could even set it to open up my email. I could just, you know, do split with Slack. There's a bunch of stuff I could do that way. So I do need to get feedback. And so this is where I will use OmniFocus to remind myself of that right now. I will say command N, file feedback on contact search in focus modes. Because I should give that a date and do that today. Because. There you go. So, and this is the OmniFocus beta. I haven't been able to figure out. So I know in the OmniFocus app, I can actually move things into a project right from here, but I can't do that now. I don't even know why. Should be able to. Especially when I started, I was like, how do I even do this? Because the uh, eye disclosure triangle or disclosure thing is closed. So I didn't even know how to do it. Like you click on this and it doesn't come up automatically, right? I click on notes and it gives me notes. That's great. I can put an attachment in. I click on this calendar. You're like, wait, I got a calendar, but like, how do I actually edit? And you gotta go click the eye then you're okay. Then you can actually do something with it. And then I can move into a project. So I'm going to call this a chore. And then clean up as command K. Right? Yeah, clean up as command K. So, and I also probably on this actually should go, because this is my work one, I should add another widget. It should be an Omni focus widget. And I want my big forecast widget. There you go. And done is done. So I can come in here and look at it. I need to build the automation with focus modes. I did that. The file feedback I need to sync my watch because I go camping. Because my watch, although it syncs with my phone, it does not actually tell the watch that it's sunk that it was uh, that it 
did the syncing, so it still wants to keep my workouts. I'm going to go away for a week, so I don't know when the last time I hooked up to my computer was. Yeah. So the things I like so far about iPadOS, I don't like that I don't, the globe key doesn't seem to be working. Now, it could be something with the AN Pro 2 as well, though, that the AN Pro 2, the magic function layer is set up. I don't know. I have to look at that later. So it's still possible that I don't have this set up properly yet. So I should go back to OmniFocus. And then remind myself, check Jig function layer and pro two globe key. And can I get into my notes directly from here? Note control two. I can control two. Right. No, I can't. I have residual issue here with my keyboard. Keyboard, uh, hardware keyboard, modifier keys, control is control, caps lock is globe. I don't actually need it. Oh, okay, magic keyboard. Control is still control. Caps lock is escape, that's fine. I actually think the lack of globe key on some other keyboards is going to, like some of them have a, uh, like a voice assistant key there. I think that is going to be a detriment now to a lot of keyboards. Now I don't use any other keyboard really except for my Ampro 2 when I'm on um, ergonomic uh, mode with my visa mount uh, or that. Uh, yeah. Hmm. It'd be interesting. I do need to check that. Okay, so control works, but I can't get into note. Says I should be able to here, right? Note control two, attachments is control three. Anyway, guess I'll just have to click it. Mm -hmm. Maybe during stream I can look at that. And I should put it in some sort of project. Can I create a new project? And it's all gonna go into chores then. For now. In case stream. It doesn't like you gotta like hit them lots of times. Not playing music, which is lame. I don't know if I really want that opening every time. Hmm. Don't know if I really want it opening every time. So what else do I want to look at in iPad OS 15? Uh, new automation for startup. I got that. If anyone has questions about research, iPad OS 15, stuff like that, I'm happy to try and answer them. So happy to try and answer them in your not a Mac that's a Mac thing I don't know if I care yeah. you know what I think that my widget there is wrong recent articles five on red Edit widget, account, choose all, source all articles. Start articles, okay, that's what I want. I only want the unread articles. That's what it's giving me? I think it is, that's what it's giving me. 
Which maybe it doesn't refresh. It probably doesn't refresh until you go in there. So then I'm seeing articles that it thought were unread, but are actually read because I read them somewhere else. Cool. I mean, that works for me. Total for all. Let's go back here. Uh, missing the glow key on my fancy keyboard sucks. Though. I like the fancy keyboard more than I like. Well, I'm mean, not at my desk. Ugh. I'm not at my desk anyways. I like it. Let's plug my iPad back in. I'll have to, like stretch that cable a little bit. This was the other thing I could look at long term is switching my desk setup. up. I've thought about getting a third monitor or second monitor anyways. So I'd have monitor, camera, monitor, and right where my iPad is, and then bringing the iPad down somewhere else so it's kind of out of the way. And then I could look at having a mon monitor with it again. I don't know if I really want that though. I just don't know if I really want that. So that's because monitor support is only okay. It's only Pass, barely passable is what it is. Barely passable. So. Screen share. Cool. Well, unless we have questions, I'm going to look at what I've got in my getting started with Obsidian course and what I could write. Why choose Obsidian? Honestly, I want some music, so let's go to Epidemic Sound, go to me, and go to Chill Hop, and do that. Minimize Safari. It's too loud for you. Let me know on the stream. You should be able to hear some music. If you can't, I guess that's fine too. But if it's too loud, I need to know. Better on me. No. This will be a course on Skillshare eventually. See you, David. Thanks for coming. And not next Friday. There's no stream next Friday at 6 a.m. because I will be far outside of any type of data coverage in any fashion. Camping. So, no stream next Friday. <sighs> but there will be a stream after. <laughs>
Storm breeze, yeah, yeah. So I mean, you can do the uh, just pitch a tent here if you want. Uh, not everywhere, but lots of places up in Canada. There's definitely tons of spots you can just pitch a tent. And we do a lot of like hiking and stuff like that too. But not into the uh, into the RV parks. I'll do some of it. So that's what I'm gonna do this weekend. And we don't have an RV. I'll take our four person tent and our two person tent because there's five of us and everyone's getting big now. So I need to do that. Uh, and we'll pitch our tents. Uh, yeah. We'll pitch our tents and then we will, uh, you know, camp for the week, kind of car camping, we'll call it. Uh, I'll take my daughter bike packing, camping. You can't see all my bike packing detritus on my couch behind me because I'm in the way. But I'll take her bike packing this year too. She's 10, so I'll carry almost everything. Uh, I'll have uh, bike packing bags all along the bike that are just kind of for me, but then I'll have 60 liters of panniers as well to strap on. And just, we're just going to ride that like an old rail trail, so it's not very steep and everything. So. Brad, send us a link to your, oh, you can't put links in here. Put a link in Discord. Or tell me what your channel name is, and I will look it up. Brad, it does take a lot of work, and so one of the reasons I stream and produce my videos kind of like live all the time is for this. I might actually, for this one, I might just record a little intro of me muddling through uh, iPadOS 15 and do that as a separate video. I didn't actually do that today, but I might do that and publish that like real quick, like later today, tomorrow, um, just to get, so honestly, to get the views for iPad OS, so we'll see how that goes. I don't know where, I kind of know where it ended, where I ended my other stuff because of my notes on that, but it does take a lot of work and that's why I stream and try to produce everything right now. I will likely end up upgrading my gear again later to a, uh, what is it? A tab mini pro ISO, ISO, Because the ISO lets me record all my cameras up to separate streams and recut later. Um, yeah, Brad, let me know what your channel is. And yeah, because I can put a link in. You can't, but I can. I use my iPhone more often swimming, but you know. iPad makes the point better. I use the iPad more when I'm sitting in the car skating. That's when I use the iPad more, but iPhone more when I'm just sitting and swimming. Other options. There it says cross platform. I did. Okay. You can hear my kids now out on our new trampoline. Got 21 people. If you got questions about Obsidian, I have iPad OS. 15 on my iPad if you want to see that as well. So, although I did just unhook my uh, fancy keyboard from it, so I won't be able to show you some of the multitasking things with the globe key because uh, if you showed up on the stream late, I tried to set the globe key on my Ann Pro 2 and I can't. Does that mean, here's a question, does that mean that I have to look at. Um, Dr. Brad Davis, nothing fancy. Let's look up Dr. Brad Davis. <clears throat> hmm. Oh, that's kind of 
gross feet. I don't really want to see that. There it is, Brad Davis. That would be it right there. Dr. Brad Davis. Well, I think the process is the big thing, Brad. I think that process is the big thing because it forces you to explain things that you may not explain, know how to explain. So I'll watch this. Save to watch later. Okay, so I'm just gonna check for keyboards was, uh, where do you even find this under Mac? Accessories. Do all Apple keyboards now have the glow key? Do they have the globe key? Is there like just a quick one to keyboards? I don't want all of them, I just want mice and keyboards. You're welcome, Brad. And there's a function key. Oh wow, I didn't even know they had this numpad. Interesting. But that's not the globe key. Function key is not globe. so I can't actually see it. I wonder if the function key works for that though. Uh, Marshall, I just started using Obsidian about a month ago and so far I really like it. What is the, what looks like a to-do plugin you have in the bottom right? It's called Checklist. Um, it collects to-do, uh, group by page. I had it only uh, include stuff for my daily notes. So this would just be tasks that are Yeah. Or yeah, it just shows me tasks that are my daily notes. Uh, Storm Breeze, my magic keyboard has the globe key. Does it? It doesn't show it here. It shows the function key. This is a new iMac. What's the keyboard that comes to that? Does it show me a picture of it? Hmm, I don't really care which one. Gallery. No, I don't, I don't see the keyboard. So it does have it. So I wonder if the function key, so here's the question. I wonder if I can program the function key. I have OmniFocus on here, I do. Is it totally gonna corrupt my OmniFocus 4 database? This is OmniFocus 3. I've got it, perfect. Uh, chores. Notes. Uh, for the iPad, yeah, yeah, and I've got, that's what I pulled off my, um, the keyboard, not the keyboard. 
keyboard fully with this magic keyboard. I was looking for like the wireless though. Cause like I have uh, my iPads like up on a Visa stand right now. And that's how I want it. So I can see my note changed over here. It just didn't sync well. Huh. So I wonder if the function, you know, I have Ovens open still. Oh, well, let me do it until I plug the keyboard in. Let me see. I got it. So I have all the cables set up anyways. Opens kit and pro two layout. Function one, function two, that's their function keys though. I need the Mac OS function key. Doesn't look like I can do that. Nope. So yeah, the function key programmed into their regular function key. Hmm. Yeah. Play with that more. Modify FN. And your Zell cast, and I've actually written this, haven't I? I did already write this. I did a YouTube video on it, which comes up later. Okay, so I already have that script done as well. Tags or links is done. City in the sink now does Thanks. Uh, settings. Just this week, I was noting that it does. Um, it's new. It's Obs Obsidian Sync now syncs your settings between devices. Should I, should I move? And then I should probably split and go to K uh, Obsidian. do that one. 
iCloud have version history? I don't know. Ah, wrong one. Okay, the most people again, maybe I will just start streaming at 6 a.m. all the time because. Because, because. Okay. Well, that's no good. I hear my child watering stuff. Okay, well, I can't even check now. Cancel. Just kill it. I do know if you set in your mobile settings, iPad, Obsidian, and you go to settings, and you want to go to files and links, if you set to move to system trash, this actually does set the, sends it into your uh, files. I know this because I just recovered a whole bunch of work last night. Uh, files, um, recently deleted, that's why I'm in here. Recently deleted. So, anything, and that's why I actually store my downloads folder in my Mac actually goes to my iCloud a downloads folder my iCloud drive. So it just syncs so I have stuff back and forth all the time. All right, you can see my craft export from July 2nd that I did earlier today, it's right here. I don't actually need it. Uh, two finger click not working, delete. That's because I changed it. I don't want to jump way over there. I can now select. That's something else you can do in iPad now. You can like drag to select in theory. Oh, it's like opposite, right? <laughs> Seems like that's opposite from what I want. Weird. Okay, I wouldn't actually do it yet. Um, I gotta hold, two finger click used to bring that up. Doesn't now though. Oh, there you go. I'm gonna prolong hard press. Weird. Anyway. That's gonna be it for the stream today. Then to go to breakfast. Thanks for joining me and asking questions for the, all the likes today. This is like the most likes I've had on a stream so far. Maybe 6 a.m. is the time I need to do it. There's no stream next week because I'll be camping so you just won't even see me. And I'll be somewhere else avoiding bugs. The Data Detective. Uh, yeah, so once I get back from vacation, I'll actually plan the time frame we're gonna do that. So let's go to OmniFocus, since this is what I'm trying out right now. Inbox. Inbox. Plan date for tech 
active book club project. This is going to be, uh, what am I going to call it? Let's call it all members. Uh, do is when uh, July 16th. Nope. Clean up. Have a great, I will. I will have a good camping trip. Thanks for showing up again, Storm Breeze. And we'll see you around. Uh, there's links to like everywhere you can find me below. There's a Discord channel if you want to join that. Uh, I get in there. It's still pretty quiet. We have some discussions sometimes, but not a ton all the time. So it's kind of quiet. I'm going to go have some breakfast, go for a bike ride, call at 12, take my wife out for lunch after. So that's my day. Hope you have a good day as well. Ciao. Yes, I'm on the Obsidian Boat Mobile Beta, Samuel, before I leave. I like it. Works pretty good all the time. Uh, there's very few things that I have problems. So that's it. Even on iPadOS 15, it seems to work. Any problem, I don't think, is Obsidian's problem. It doesn't support multi-windowing, though. I wish it did. It supports all the split-screen stuff, but not multi-windowing on iPad. So, Otherwise, it's pretty good. Almost every plugin works. Not checklist, not outliner. And that's the only two I've encountered so far. But otherwise, it's good. Good. Now I'm really going to go. Have a good one.